They'll be on tomorrow. They have a day off. And we sit in for this great encounter between Oscar Dominguez and Shane Van Boning. A race to nine. Winner break format and yesterday. The seven pack by Shane Van Boning. Will he kick on from there? Shane Boning wins the leg. Beautiful leg to start out with. You guys see any of it, Carl, Niels? Of Shane's performance yesterday? It's frozen. I was playing a uh, match myself and I was watching a little bit from the sideline, but the only thing I really noticed was, uh, was some loud voices at, at one moment in the match. And I think Shane got a warning for uh, soft breaking, which I found a little bit hard to believe because I saw him uh, actually play you in Romania uh, right. practicing and he was, he was drawing the ball back into the kitchen and to do that, you still have to hit him pretty firm. I mean, I, I cannot imagine that he's like uh, really babying this break, but that's pretty much the only thing I uh, I noticed from that game after he was down 3-0. He really caught a game. Look at this. Up against Oscar Dominguez, former Moscone Cup player, represented uh, Team USA on two occasions. Running a beautiful pool hall in San Sacramento, California. 33 tables. Very dangerous player who actually recently ran a nine pack against Feder Gorst in a tournament in the States. So these two are more than capable of running packages then. So I didn't see any of Shane's match yesterday. I heard, as you guys both know, news soon travels fast around the arena. What's going on when Shane's breaking? So very interested to see what goes on in this match. But he was hitting them softer than this break yesterday, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, he was drawn to the long rail. Um, and I think the break he just used is what we saw Filler use and some other players. You can hit it firmer and I think it's easier to control. So your position on the one will not be as good, but it's reliable. was clear to see yesterday how well he managed his game. Shane was a bit fragile in the beginning, but picked up rhythm. Of course, with every wreck you run, the longer the run is, the higher the confidence will be for all champions. But I think for Shane, it goes a little more than for the others. He is a very high gear. Yeah, and he's had a couple of really good comeback games. He was down, I believe it was 4-1 against Konyar at the Masters. And Konyar never won another game. Shane played really good. He wasn't breaking and running out, but he was he was all round. He was super solid. And yesterday he was down 3-0 and won 9-3. And he looks quite comfortable right out of the gate here. Keeping Oscar Dominguez in the chair, breaking and running the opening rack. 1-0 and he'll break in the next one. We're trying to keep Oscar seated as long as possible. I'm feeling great. I've been working on my game for the last week since World Pool Masters and um, I'm, I'm actually feeling really great. I might have the edge, I think. And uh, another American player, good player, great player. Just need to play my best game. It would mean a lot. So this is um, this is the only tournament that I want to win. So, um, I'll be sleeping with the trophy for at least a month. So if I did, so. A humble man, Shane. Get outspoken. Speaks Even most with the cue. Yeah, but even before he played uh, Josh Filler in the semi-finals in Gibraltar, he said, listen, I played him 10 times, seconds, won once, leading by one rack to nil the right before the match. I watched him play in Bucharest, and what struck me, and in the Gibraltar as well, that he's patient. He shows a lot of patience, a little more laid back than maybe in the past. Not too, too anxious to, to find that high gear. In tournament play. 
because uh, when he's playing challenge matches, he gets more opportunities to find that high gear. But in tournament play, the races are much shorter. And that's where he really, he, he, it seems like he's gotten much better at that over the years. Wouldn't you agree? With the patience yes, and definitely. the all around uh, working himself into a match when his break isn't really working yet. Yeah, especially when you look at the Moscow and he cup in that short race to five. I noticed he's actually breaking with his playing cue as well, isn't he? Next time, sir, please. The easiest to wreck this. To get from the pink four to the purple five later on is achievable, but there's some traffic to negotiate with the seven the eight if he goes three rails yeah this is a big shot here he's gonna go either side rail bottom rail side rail and then land again just above that purple five there with some left spin and the speed is crucial here. And you want to be very careful of that side pocket. That's the danger on these kinds of shots. But he managed it work very well. And this uh, should have Oscar worried a little bit <laughs> in his chair because he had the one ball right over the corner after the break. Open rack. And Oscar has seen this before in the States with Shane. These two know each other from the Moscone Cup. They've played each other many times, I would think. And do you think it's one of those things, Alex or Carl, if you're the dominant man in your country and you're playing your, your countrymen, do you think you have like an edge out of the gate? Do you have that extra little confidence? Yeah, hundred percent. Especially in this type of match where it's you know live on TV at the World Championship. So I fully agree. And we're going to get to hear from Oscar Dominguez. It's very special to me because you took for granted all the opportunities you had in the past, you know, pre-COVID. And now with COVID, you realize like, hey, you know, this is, it's a blessing to be here. This game's so much mental. As long as you go in with the mentality that you feel like you can win, then you'll do okay. I, I just want to play my game. If I play poorly, it's going to be because I was going to play poorly against anybody, not just Shane. Don't let them shoot. Keep the pressure on. Really just, uh, you know, make them uncomfortable. Keep them uncomfortable. Punish all his mistakes. Don't make him shoot, but Oscar Dominguez has lost the leg. So, if he right. needs to wait and pray break. for an open shot to. rather sooner than later. The first time we saw this break, watch this break that Shane does. He draws the cue ball all the way back, almost to where he has the cue ball now. The first time we saw this was, was with Ronnie Okano at the World Nine Ball. Do you guys not remember the year? I'll, I'll tell you, uh, I think it's 06. Yes, it is 06. And, and, and okay, now back then, uh, the qualifying rounds were groups of eight, where you played round robin, so you played seven races to five, to six even. Okano was about to get eliminated against our fellow countryman, Niels, Mar Marshall Martins. Yep. And in that match, being down like 5-2, Okano decided, why don't I try this? Why don't I try this? He found the break, went on to win the tournament. And in that match against Marcel, this is a nice little fact. Marcel, I believe, had to win Thanks two racks, I believe. And he never got there. Uh, Okano beat him 10-1. Okano qualified last as number 64 and went on to win the tournament with, with this break, like you yeah, said. But 99, Efren Reyes in Cardiff, same thing. Efren was about to get eliminated by Vincent Farquet, was losing 6-2, I think. 
Oh, squeezed through and won the title. Oscar shot to the table. Well, I never knew that story about Ronnie Alcano. That's pretty. Uh, pretty yeah, but impressive. it hap it happens a lot. Fedor Gorst, when he won, he lost his opening match. When Darren Appleton won the title, he lost 9-0 in the opening match. So did Daryl Peach. He lost 9-0 in his opening so match. So we've got to look Should out we? in the losers' round who's going to so grab Niels, the title. <laughs> we're we're, what we're in doing? trouble. <laughs> <laughs> nice little shot there by Oscar. I'm curious if Shane can get underneath this one ball enough to play a what's called a resave, a kick save. He wants to hit the bottom rail hit that one ball thin and put the cue ball beautifully behind the purple five and now oscar is facing the same kind of shot you can foul that's what he's looking at right away if you look at his eyes he's not looking at the rails he's looking at this ball accepting the foul giving ball on hand but tying the one ball up executed that really well frozen. I'll tell you what you don't really see a lot of, do you? You know, like Shane rolling the purple, uh, the pink four right on top of the one. Seen it once, didn't we? Many, many years ago. Yeah, so what what you're referring to, Carl, is that the player who's getting ball in hand is using the ball in hand to close up the lowest number ball. And then the next player who's on one foul will have ball in hand, but no passage to that ball. Yeah, that's right. He would be in Mexican prison. <laughs> Cannot escape. But still, this is uh, a pretty good shot from Shane. I think he tried to open that 1 ball. 5 also a little bit more so he could potentially play a carom after the next ball in hand that he's hoping to get. Oscar will have no idea where the balls will go. His main concern is contacting the one and avoiding the four with the cue ball. Foul shot. No contact, second foul. So what do you do here, boys? Oscar's on two fouls, you have ball in hand. Do you go for this one five and try to run out, or do you put him behind the six again? Yeah, boys, what do you do here? <laughs> Roll that pink four up to the one four. <laughs> well, I think um, the Karen's clearly on now, so... Oh, that's nice, oh, the double kiss nice. on the one. That shows some nice knowledge there. Double kissing the one into play. Otherwise, it would have been frozen on the rail. Nice. Hard on Oscar. When he got that first opportunity for the safety, the only save he could play, he played it. But the kick resave by Shane was just good. He needs to be a little bit careful here, because it's just landed a little bit short on this. There you see, bearing down on this. Heart of the pocket, though, for SVB. Read critical comments on social media, of course, always, but uh, in regard to Shane Van Bonig stroke, many snooker players, former snooker players, I think, Looks a bit yippy. They should try and get in the box with this man. <laughs> if there's anyone that can move that cue ball around, loading it, it up with spin, it's Shane Van Boney. It stays very still on all his shots. So he's landed a little bit funky here. He might have to run into the eight and bump it a little bit into the open, or can he get around it? I don't think so. He could. He just made contact with it, but it didn't hurt him. Kept his position. How many times has he been in the finals? I remember he played the finals against Albin, is that correct? Twice. Twice in a row, against, right? Uh, so, Yi. That's it. 3-0 on the board. Shane Van Boning is cruising. Ran two, then a little battle in rack three. And he'll break in the fourth.
break. Beautiful ven venue in the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes, the World Championship nine ball pool, where on the main table, Shane Van Boning is about to break against Oscar Dominguez. He's up 3 0. But many fierce battles are fought on the outside tables as well. Been watching many matches today. Standout performance earlier from the Polish Viktor Zielinski beating Joshua Filler. There was a strong match. Aloysius Yep had a hard fought battle against Omar Al Shaheen coming through 9 7. That was a nice match as well. And our Dutch Mark Bicerbos beating Ruslan Chinachov 9 4. People may be wondering on this break from Shane, why is he drawing it? Why is he not stopping the ball like all the other players used to do? And the reason is, this might get a little technical, but when you draw that ball so much, it kind of puts some opposite spin on the one ball and it makes it go in front of the side pocket and he's actually trying to play that he wants the one ball to land in front of the side and then cross over to that corner where oscar's sitting and that way he can play position that's the trick of this tournament if players can make balls and get position on the one you can do some serious damage yeah and the added value if you draw the cue ball away from the middle of the table Two you, front. you avoid likely kisses the love area on the table wow. question is Niels are you going to be trying it tomorrow no way <laughs> <laughs> no I'm going to stick to my own kind of uh, cut break and the backup is a fuller break but uh, I have no desire of for me personally Extension risking ball. to draw the ball on the side or the corner I think it's a very risky break but if you can master it it's a weapon and he's been working on it. I don't think it's a break. You can just show up and swing at it, try to copy it. Could be wrong, but. Difficult safety for Oscar. We'll worry about the double kiss. Ha ha! Played we'll the use kiss. the double kiss. Played it with draw. Take note of that. If you roll the cue ball at the second kiss, cue ball will depart but it will be reversed. So he kept the cue ball alive playing it with backspin. That was kind of all he had, but he's gonna be right behind that green six after this shot. Oh, look at this, Ooh, nasty. And Oscar has just not had anything yet. Well executed little defense. Even to hit this ball is tough because the three is there. He will hit it with speed. Now, the angle that Oscar has will make the cue ball curve. So he'll opt to play center ball with stun. Still a difficult shot, but a little s straighter line for the cue ball. I find that those are one of the hardest kick shots on the table. When you're close to that rail and you have to hit it with speed, you pretty much never have a clue how much it's going to deflect or curve. Because if you hit it 10% softer, you get like maybe a diamond different reaction. Second wreck where Oscar got to play a little bit, but every time difficult positions, difficult safeties. I was going to say, the only thing that could go wrong in this rack is him, him landing short on the six. What, because that would mean he has to do a lot of work on the brown seven. He's landed a little funny here. And now he has to start sh hitting a couple of rails going up or side to side. Trying to get under the seven. And he has to come with one more big power stroke. It needs to get all the way to the other side of the table. Round to nine, four rails. 
Well, very well judged. Doesn't get to the fourth, and that's better. The players want angles. Yeah, this is one of those shots, personal preference. If you want to go... Whoa! Just going to say, if you want to hit that second reel there and come back up, because you have to baby that shot so much, it becomes a little bit harder, actually. But he got there. Sigh of relief. Check out the action on the other tables. Everyone fighting for a place in the last 64 here. Capito. The young player beating Vitali Pazzura, a former European champion, eight ball. Hard fought match, 9-8. Matikanen from Finland taking his man down. And here, Sergei Lutska from Moscow. An easy win. He was Fedor Gore's partner in the World Cup of Pool. Yeah, and he's going to be playing Joshua Filler. And the loser of that match will be out of this year's tournament. He said break. To break. Leading point. 4-0. Shane to break. It's not only about finding the sweet spot and the best speed, but also your ability to copy it, to repeat it time and time again. Hello. Tough on the three ball, though. It's the only thing that really got him this game. Beautifully executed break, but the three and the six are blocking each other. So we could see Oscar back at the table, potentially. Checking the clock. After the break, players will have one minute to think, decide and execute. After this shot, it'll be 30 seconds with one extension per rack. How nice is this one? That was a great shot, actually. He's really over that ball, and he managed to get all the way to the side rail. And now he's got a combination on the red three to the green six. And that's pretty much almost game ball. If he can make that one, the rack is wide open. Yeah, he's just looking at the rail. He's going to play the three, the red three, into the rail first. more margin playing it like that doesn't play this lightly you lose the cue ball here if you don't give it enough attention He's playing in the very nice rhythm, I find. Yeah, he's, he's had some really nice game time in Gibraltar. He um, played a lot of matches there. Some good arena time. The fans were back out. Then he had some good practice in Romania. Straight over to Milton Keynes again. So he's in a good rhythm. I think I think he has played 100 hours for sure in Romania. And I actually understood or, or think to understand why he is like he is. Like we know Shane is a very instinctive player. Um, he just puts it when he's in the game, when he's not fishing, he just puts in many, many hours. And uh, he, he just shuts down 
the analytical part of his brain, he just goes and he plays and he keeps on playing. If he misses a shot, he'll practice 20, 30, 40 times till he's content. Well, Captain, you were playing most of them 100 hours with him, wasn't you? So no. you must be in pretty good shape as well. No. I'm good from the sidelines. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think he has learned that, though, from the Filipinos, because Shane used to go over to the Philippines a lot when we had all the world championships there. He went on uh, solo trips, playing all the Filipinos. And his goal, we're talking uh, probably 15 years ago, his goal was just to beat everybody. And not just in tournaments, he wanted to make a statement. He, In his mind, if he could beat all the Filipinos in challenge matches, that would mean that he's the best player on the planet, agree? I, I think it's the same time that Darren Attleton was making his flight hours in the in the Philippines, like 07, 08, 09. Yeah, Darren went there mostly for college because he came from English eight ball and he really wanted to develop his game, study the game, learn from the Filipino players like Efren Reyes, Bustamante. Uh, there's so many of them over there. And Shane, he, he went in on a terror tour. He wanted to just make a statement and say, bring them on, bring everything you got. I'm going to beat them all, and I'm going to prove that I'm the best player on the planet. And we were, we're talking about playing in smoky pool rooms with triangles, old cloth. Rock number six. Chickens. Ten ball, chickens flying Running around the table. <laughs> And uh, you have to take your hat off for somebody that does that. Because that we've been there, guys, and that's not an easy environment to uh, play your best pool. Pinball machine, many kisses. Still has a shot. A good shot, actually. Distance. Oscar has not had an opportunity at the table two safeties which he played well yeah and he missed the one kick true hold it or with more speed in between the four and five uh, the two and five or could go forward top rail and then land on the high right side of the two ball A little funky, so this is a tester. Just going back to the Philippines, there. I remember when we used to go over and you'd be playing a challenge game, wouldn't you? Trying to get in stroke, and after about an hour, the table were full of white talcum powder marks, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. where the guy used to mark the table in case you touched the ball and things like that. They would use school board chalk to write the scores on the table, they would have stacks of talcum powder sometimes on a, on a rail <laughs> where players would put their fingers in there, put it on the cue. It was a show. And laugh in your face if you dog the nine ball. It was done to me and I saw it done to others. Guys, we saw a miss. The man is clearly human. And does Oscar have a path? Oh, sir. Oh, man. Gets to the table and he's got to play defense again. Tough little kick shit. Look. Tough little kick shot. Pardon my English. Thank you, please. You can. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to do here, Alex? Do you try to hit it full in the face or do you want to kick this ball? Like this thing? Well, actually, about this type of shot, he's in a very bad spot, down 5-0, etc. But this, in my ball pool, is a chance. If you're, you're a world-class player and Oscar is just that, this is a chance to turn the game around. To at least gain the initiative. Oh, I'm not saying it was easy, but the distance of the two off of the rail allowed him to get underneath. He actually hit the ball first and then hit it twice. So he got a bit fortunate on that shot. It's exactly what he needed. He was due. He was due. Ball, shot ball on hand. 
Right, Oscar first. Dominguez, 5-0 down. He's been on the sidelines in this Thank match you. thus far. It's his time. And mind you, winner break format. You're still very much in the game. Do you think also the trap now for Oscar is... All right, here we go. I'm going to put three or four together. That's that's the mental trap. I think what he really needs to do... Oh, boys. He's put the three ball. Oh, boy. Cross the ball. Yeah, the seed treatment. Okay, so he's straight back to the table after missing that three ball. So there's another chance. One shot at a time for Oscar. Is he playing this in the side? He is playing in the side. Didn't like the angle, didn't like to finesse it. Can he cut this, guys? He can't cut it, but maybe he needs to play the same trick. Run into the seven. If he goes past the seven, two rails, needs to avoid the nine. Nicely done. Stay down on this shot. Go side rail and over to the other side rail. You can see that he's trying to get his arm loose. He's been in that chair for most of this match. Nicely done. That's beautiful direction. Two rails here. Personal like he's uh, following Clipping. through more than before, like really making sure he's getting through the ball. There you go. Two misses by Shane in this wreck. Meaning that Oscar Dominguez can open his account in this race to nine. Still down by four wrecks, still trailing by four wrecks, but he'll break in the next.
Day two in the World Pool Championship, and we go to table two where Tim Locksmith, the ruiter from the Netherlands, is up 8 3 against Chris Robinson from USA. Solid match player, Tim de Ruiter is. He could be, looks like, being a surprise, surprising Chris Robinson. Solid win, cruising to a 9 3. The seven track. Two players representing the United States here, Oscar Dominguez trailing 5 to 1 versus Shane Van Boning, but having the break. I'm here with uh, Niels Feyen and Carl Boyes, both in the tournament, they have a day off. They're qualified for the last 64 single elimination. That's the break I like, I'm a traditionalist, that's what, you know, when I used to watch two years ago, even before I started playing this game, I just used to love it when the players would just crunch the break and tap the cue ball in the centre, just like Oscar did then. A traditionalist. Is there anyone that can uh, confirm that? <laughs> <laughs> just myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, yeah, you're playing a race to nine. Would you rather be 5-3 uh, up or 5-3 down and breaking? With this format? Yeah. Uh, I'd rather be 5 3 up in yeah. any format. Just, yeah. <laughs> I'm up, right? <laughs> yeah. But we have to think about it for a second because the break is so strong. So, good safety there from Oscar. That's a great shot. And one was almost frozen on the rail. He blundered the combination, lost position. And he played a beautiful safe. Yeah, his safety game is really strong. Towards the cue ball. Shots ball in. There's a ball in hand for you. Nice little layout. Not a lot of work to do, other than controlling the cue ball. It's all about getting straight in on the four. with an angle, then at least on the left side of that potting line. And he's not straight in, Alex. On the wrong side of the ball. I think he has to go off the side rail in between the green six and five and land above the five and shoot his next two shots in the same pocket. But it means, it would mean he has a little zone to land in. Can you get off the reel? That was nicely done. Recovered. Still needs one good shot, I think, to the corner. Otherwise, the cue ball will get away from him if he shoots it in the side. So he has to stay down on this one. A little change of momentum. shots to get a second break on the board it's good for Oscar it's good for the match as well the Dominguez is starting to fire back at chain Dominguez wins the wreck. two wrecks in a row for Oscar Dominguez and whilst Marcel Eckert the referee will re-wreck the balls for Oscar to break we move over to an outside table. Roman Hubler representing the Czech Republic, beating Jennifer Beretta from the US by a scoreline of 9 to 2. Czech attack. Job well done. A man who could have and would have played the World Cup of Pool together with Michael Gavenchak. But due to Corona, he made place for Peter Urban who we saw yesterday on the TV table against Shane Van Boning. That goes to show you how 
corona is still affecting everybody because I heard the story of Roman Hückler where he isolated himself from also his family, his child, didn't want to take any risk and all he had to do was go to the office one day, pick something up, spoke with one colleague and boom, got infected. No World Cup of pool. So very unfortunate, but good to see him back here at the Worlds. And let's check out Oscar's break. Let's see if you can do it again, Carl. Squats it. And the key, the one ball lands past that side and goes two and three rails around. A nice little break. different break than Shane's, but very effective. Look at the one. That's what all the players are wanting to do. Get shape on that one. Very nicely done. Yeah, and this will just give Shane a little bit of something to think about. If Oscar can just run the table now, obviously winner breaks. You can already see Shane. I'm looking at him. He's sat in his chair, shaking his head. This could be on the rail, guys. Very minute angle, so you'll need to draw straight back. Or the five in the top right corner. Yeah, and you'll definitely need an angle on the five. Anything but straight. Oh, wow. Forced it over. It's a gutsy little shot there. Most players would have played a draw shot. Didn't the pocket the five ball high much. right. I think he might have Whoa. might have hit real first there. Still not out of the woods yet though. He needs a, a really strong shot here. I think he wants to follow it, come off the bottom rail, and come back out. Yeah, this is all about timing this. Try not to whack the ball. Just try and cue it. Get that cue ball moving forward. Oh, he's done a nice job here. Bit unlucky with the position. Has to play safety now. Put a little bit of right spin on it. Maybe unwanted. You think he can use this nine ball? Just hide him. Ooh, no good. Easy jump or is it open? Well, might be open, but even if it's just part of the nine blocking the six ball. Well, he's got his jump cue. Yeah. So he's just going over the edge. Could have been tighter, oh. that safety. Didn't really get into that as he wanted. It's kind of a dead cue ball. In yesterday's match, Shane van Boning against Peter Urban. He looked fragile in the opening racks and then switched, the f uh, flicked the switch and, and ran seven racks in a row. Now it's the reverse. He looked so good and smooth in the beginning, the first five. starting to look like a different player but it's all up to Oscar what he's going to do with that he needs to keep his foot on the gas pedal big time tricky little shot here doesn't want to hit the eight he doesn't want to scratch in the side so put a little bit of right spin on it nicely done yeah, that's a tough shot on this table. Very easy on a slick cloth to push the cue ball offline. We have a match. We have a match. At least he's in the game.
Andy's breaking well. Five losses in a row, but he's he's responding. Wins three racks in a row, and that gives us time to listen to Tim Locksmith, the Ruiter, after his win over Chris Robinson. Here, Tim de Ruiter beating Chris Robinson from the Netherlands. Six players here representing the Netherlands. And the semi-Kiwi, Marco Teutcher, living in New Zealand, taking his man down. A good win for the former US Open 10 ball champion. Marco Teutcher didn't twitch. A good performance and on to the next round. Yeah, the boys are not 14 anymore, Alex. That's when we they came on the on the scene, remember, in Holland. They're late 20s now, fully grown adults. Marco living in New Zealand. Some guys are engaged, some are married. Yeah, imagine ju just to mention this. Teutcher, when he gets back to New Zealand, he has to quarantine for two weeks. Apart from the 24-hour trip to get here. A lot same of commitment. Same as Justin. Justin Sage. Yeah, he's still in quarantine from the World <laughs> Pool Masters. Big still shout there. out to him. Yeah, he keeps messaging me. I'm like, day what, pal? <laughs> Just reminding him. <laughs> I think he's on day eight. Unbelievable. That's tough. Meanwhile, nice break. Look at this. Nice break. Now, a lot of green to cover to get from the two to the three. And on the TV table, uh, the spin doesn't grab as much. So you need to really be precise in positioning the cue ball for the two. And interesting, Oscar was putting his cue down where he wanted to be. But look at this, Oscar is not the biggest guy on the tour and he's in trouble now with reaching this ball. So he's going to grab his extension, but I'm curious if he can even reach it with the extension. He's going to have the probably the longest forehand that you're going to see in this tournament. Can't get there. Looks like he will need the other extension as well. Extension, An extra 30 seconds. Not enough angle to force the cue ball to get to the other side of the table. He'll draw back right where the 7 and 4 are. This could go wrong easily. But did have enough angle. Great effort, but just overran his mark. But he can play a really nice little safety again here if he likes. He can just, if he elevates, he can stop the cue ball on the nine. Hmm. Kind of drew that ball a little bit unwanted. And you see what I see here, Alex? He can hit the three on the right side and the three will run into the six and stay right there. He can use that ball. So great opportunity for Shane. Yeah, if you're sure that the three ball will be smothered by the six, you can put all the focus on the cue ball. It's giving Oscar a lot of air, but I have to say Oscar needs that air right now. Despite having won three racks in a row and the good positions that he's getting after the break, He's still, he looks still a bit uncomfortable. Needs a good cue ball because of where the three's finished. I think he can squeeze by there. Well, he's gone no. for his jump cue again, so he's definitely jumping over something. I can never tell from this angle with this camera view. 
It looks like he's straight in. Meanwhile, he's jumping. But I think he will make this. This is a really nice little jump. Nice cue ball. Oscar's previous shot was through a small case of a bank. On, on the three ball? No, I think I think the, the safety was good. He just looked a little twitchy on that elevated shot. And he, had he not drawn back the cue ball, his, the safety would have been better. Just hold it behind the nine. Yeah, and the whole story of that rack was the shot on the one. He overran that first shot or he could have been running out himself. Back in the saddle, Shane Van Boning, having lost three games on the trot. Back with the initiative. For a three rack lead. Shane Van Boning, 6 3 up. He'll break in the tent. Let's see if that chance will put him back and make him play his A game like he did in the first five racks. Welcome on day two of the World Championship in the Marshall Arena. Many tables, lots of action, hard fought battles in the losers round. All players trying to get to the last 64. Here the 
former world champion in the pupils, Moritz Neuhausen, beating the Finnish Jani Sikinen with a 9-6 win. Came close to beating Jason Shaw yesterday. Faltered in the end, but sets it right. A 9-6 win for the young German. And we switch our focus to Shane Van Boning's break. It was 5-0 up. 5-3, 6-3. And one of all those kisses, not having an open shot means that we'll see Oscar get back to the table. The question is, with what? little safety used to red three I think Oscar can bend around this three ball though and hit the rail or is he jumping guys what is he doing little billiard shot, oh, shot. contact on it didn't, didn't get in there enough, though, with the Bad spin. Enough. Yeah, it looked like he rushed it a little bit as well. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought, and it's not the first time. You only use the extension once when where you had to extend the queue and get out the rest. Maybe it's his shot clock management. Pooh. Was that me or was it a bad contact? It sounded heavy. Didn't hurt him though. He's gonna go three rails again. Very nice speed control on that shot. Yeah, it's so difficult on those shots to get that speed right if you hit it 7% fat or thin. Still make the ball, but that causes the cue ball to travel way longer. Or way less. I see him play this to the corner. Yeah, why flirt with that nine ball if you have all the room there on this side of the table? Oof. A little heavy. He's picking up the pace, guys, and that usually means trouble. He smells blood. Yeah, and I'm sure he'd be a little annoyed with those mistakes earlier, where he missed two shots in one rack. clean shot and that's a clean win after that good break the strong safety with and with ball in hand never into trouble seven three two more needed let's watch and listen to Christina to catch the Moscovite who has won her match against Tobias Bongers the young German Christina, she beats Tobias Bongers. That's a good win. Bongers is a good young player. Christina, many congratulations. A big relief. Thank you. Yeah, it was a very nervous match and I was uh, down in the beginning. I was basically down the whole match uh, because I felt really uncomfortable and couldn't fight my nerves. But then I uh, catch him and was able to win the match. And you got there in the end. So tonight you face Craig Osborne, 
and then you know if you win that you are through yeah it's uh it's like a big dream might come true and uh, i will try my best to show my best game and manage it to last 60 court you have a few hours now will you have a, a relax or will you just keep practicing i will have a l relax probably talk to my father because he's my coach <laughs> my my friend who always helps me and we just uh, talk about the match the mistake so uh, i want to know what i did wrong so i can change it in the next match excellent well many congratulations and good luck tonight one of the best female players in the world of nine ball christina to catch will get ready for her match against Craig Osborne, who defeated Ralph Suke yesterday, overcoming a 5-0 deficit. But switching to the TV table, a direct scratch from Shane. There it was. Yeah, that's what you was talking about, wasn't it, Niels? Yeah, that's the one that uh, I would be afraid of every single time with that breaker. You're drawing the cue ball back between two pockets. And, uh, I mean, give him credit, he's been doing it well a lot of times, but it's, I mean, the pocket's just so big down there. But, I mean, if you can run five in a row and then scratch maybe once, you know, yeah. he's doing a lot of damage with it, so he's taking that one scratch. Like, the alternative is Filler's break, who draws straight to the short drill. And the position on the one will not be that good, but it's more reliable and easier to do. You might want to check that out later. Lost his position again slightly, Oscar here. I find these shots on the six a bit tricky on new cloth, because if you roll the ball, I'm afraid the cue ball's gonna dip. Dive down, huh? Yeah. To, like, come out too low. Line. Yeah, you see that slide that Alex was talking about. You see it going down yeah, a little bit. He tried to solve it with the right spin, but then the right spin doesn't bite so much. He's still good. He's still good, but, but he was playing for the seven in the side pocket. And it's not like a player will tell himself, okay, I'm good, whatever. It's constant feedback. Where do I want to go? Did I get there? If if not, why? All about speed, this shot. And thus, about the exact thickness on the eight. Hit it. Hit it thick. Yeah, Hit he's it on thick. 50-yard line, so this is a little tester. You can still hit it with... Low right though. Yeah, I you like play low right. Yeah. I like high right here. I like the low right because I get a cleaner contact and I can let my stroke out a little bit more, but it's like total personal preference. I, I really don't like to hit these with the roll shot, but some guys do. So nothing wrong with this. Direct scratch from Shane Van Boni. Keeping Oscar. Dominguez aspirations in this match alive, well alive. 7 4. It's a big difference if your opponent is not on the hill yet. Here are the stats for you. Pot success. That's interesting. 97% for Oscar Dominguez. 49 for Shane. But it's the safety that got Dominguez. In the beginning, played a couple of good ones. The resaves by Shane Van Boning just that bit better. And two kicking errors from Oscar Dominguez. But he's still in it, trailing by three. But as long as your opponent is not on the hill, it feels okay, That's right? That's, That's what I think. Trailing seven four. Yeah, true. Oscar, he. In his mind now, right, he made a mistake. Shane won a game, but he wins the next game right back, and he's breaking. So he's 6-4. He knows he's, he knows he's getting good results on the break. 7-4, excuse me. So still, look at this one. He's doing it very well. I almost have to say he's doing it better than Shane. And if I was Oscar now, I, I would still feel my, fancy myself for this match. 
Yeah, I agree. I think he's breaking beautifully, to be fair. He's controlling the cue ball, the ones coming around. The nice balls. Layout. I th something that, you know, could be relevant is he comes from the West Coast, California. That's a big time difference, eight hours. Uh, he didn't have time to come early since he has the new club in Sac Sacramento. Uh, so there is a jet lag. Sometimes you feel it, but if you're on the table, if you get to pocket balls, that will ebb away. He could be waking up right now. I like staying low on the six. So I'm looking, he's on the three. We'll get to the pink four and needs to decide where he wants to be on the six to get from the green sticks to the brown seven. So you mean shoot the green at the top left, right, Alex? Yeah. Yep. I agree. I like this. Did not try to get closer to the four. The only thing he has to watch out for here is that he doesn't land on the rail. If anything, he wants to stay on the side where he where the four ball is now you don't want to hit the rail or land on the rail because then you have to go to the other side of the table Ooh, this is a little well bit he's on the right side of the ball <laughs> a lot of angle though so much angle that he still has to go to the other side of the table he played this with a bit of left or just center ball i think center ball because then at least i'm not straight in on the seven because I need an angle on the seven to bring me all the way back to the eight. So I gotta. Oh, guys. Missed that one. Does he get lucky? No. Yeah, that's a bad miss, isn't it? Didn't see that one coming. And you might have been worried about exactly what you meant with that six. Getting on the seven. Do I use a little spin or no spin? Could have affected the shot. But actually, the shot on the four was the one that got him. But look at this, guys. He might be straight in on this one. So a big shot coming up. There's always some angle on the nine ball pool table. And left. Oh, oh. Look at that. That's the shot. From where he was, that's a monster effort. Jacked up with maximum spin. And Oscar had so many beautiful layouts. He's had about three. He really could have made this 5-5. Five, five. Extension calls. He hasn't capitalized. And let's see how Shane hit this hits this guys. Is he's going he's going for the roll shot also. Oh, I'm surprised. He likes to hit the cue ball low. I think that type of shot is you can go from match to match and think, oh I want to hit it low this time or high the next well, match. Well myself, like Niels likes to play it firm and low on the cue ball, deep in the corner. Uh, I've missed uh, many or enough nine balls like that because I did. I was thinking low or roll, low, and at some point I decided to just always roll it if I'm like that. Yeah, good point. You got to commit to uh, one or the other. I commit to the low, like Ralph. the last 20 years on that shot. Here's Ralphie. Hold on, Niels. Here's uh, Ralph Suke breaking 2 1 lead over Kevin Lanoia from Belgium. The son of Mario Lanoi doesn't want to be reminded because he's the one playing right now. But Mario Lanoi used to be uh, a real strong player. Snooker background in the Benelux, Belgium, Lux uh, the Netherlands. He was winning every tournament when we started, Niels. Exactly. He was a strong player. But he's at home and Kevin is playing. He's fighting the to take the Kaiser down. Stefan Boning is breaking on the hill, leading 8-4. And switching sides. Yeah. After one scratch. 
No, and he got a kiss the last game when he broke. Oh, this is the power break, 100%. Pop it. Well, pop it is an understatement if he's breaking head on. Slam dunk. Cue ball pop, trying to park it in the centre, but when you're out of practice on that type of break, you can often lose the cue ball like you did. Can you roll this one in in the top left and get around the nine? Or is it a scratch angle? Because he looks like he's powering it. Whoa, oh. look at that, boys. What Ooh. a shot that was. Yeah, that's one of the best shots on the TV table that I've seen the past two days. What a beauty. Around the five, look at that. Nasty. Good speed. That didn't look too yippy to me, Alex. Yippy stroke or whatever people say. That was pure power. Power and precision in one. Needs five balls to advance to the last 64 to the single elimination. And think about his angle on the six. The seven, he can cut it, but can he hit it fat enough to go around the eight ball? Yeah, I was even thinking he would draw into the eight off the three, but maybe he didn't have the angle, like open that ball up, get more room on the seven. Now he has to play. Ooh. Oh, I like it. That could have gone. <laughs> could have gone wrong there from that camera angle. But hit it nice. Ooh. We go three rails. Around the nine? Yeah, or draw directly to the short rail. It depends on the angle. Could be half a centimeter to the left place. or right. And it changes the shot that you play. If you use straight draw, it bites into the ball a lot. He's coming. Side rail, bottom rail, side rail, and around that nine to the middle of the table for the win. There you go, that's it. Shame and boning. Started out great. 5-0 lead. Uh, little feedback, little fight back from Oscar Dominguez. But in the end, too many errors by Dominguez. He'll get a second chance later.